What's going on guys? I got both bikes out. I got the Hayabusa right there. I got Mad Max right there. We're gonna go over everything on the bike. I got about 11,000 miles on Mad Max and I have about 3,000, almost 3,000 miles on Thunderdome, our 2023 Suzuki Hayabusa. So you guys been asking me, obviously, a lot of questions through messages and email. But today I wanna give you guys kind of a review as far as why I think, why I think this bike, the 2022 Road Glide Standard Mad Max, why I think it's the absolute best Harley Davidson I've ever owned. And I've owned about 12 or 13 of them and why I think it's probably, if not one of, or if not the best Harley Davidsons I ever rode. And it all goes back to the beginning of when I purchased this bike, when I got rid of Silverback late of last year, and we started to build on it over the winter, and I started riding it in January, basically. That's when I started doing all the videos kind of up to the frozen waterfalls in New York State and all that stuff. So we kind of started riding it in January. And after having Silverback and after doing that kind of massive building stuff, I kind of seen what I wanted different because there was a lot of things that I, I wanted different, wanted done differently. And what there were some mistakes uh, that I made, like didn't have fans on it to cool the engine properly in the 128 build that I had that I blew because it was like over 100 degrees stuck in traffic. So just stuff like that. So that's why I wanna go over this bike. And, and just to let you guys know, like this build was more of a plan, more kind of all the components were installed on this bike for a purpose, for a reason. And we're gonna go over that. I'll go over everything from front to back, top to bottom. I'd like to do these every couple months or so just to give you guys a review, to tell you guys what works, what didn't work, what I really love, what I really don't like, if there is any, because honestly, this, this bike is absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we get into that, I do wanna tell you guys that this Saturday, this is pretty cool. This Saturday, uh, I think I'm actually going to have both bikes there, but definitely the Hayabusa, but I might have Mad Max there as well. This Saturday at Motorcycle Mall in Belleville, New Jersey, I'm going to be having a meet and greet there. I'm going to be there from about 10 to about 12, and then I have a family function to attend to, but then I'm going to be back probably around 4 and be there from 4 to 8 till closing till whenever, four to eight, four to nine, whenever it closes, but I will be there. Hopefully both of the bikes will be there, but definitely Thunderdome. But what's cool is if you guys are into sport bikes and watch sport bike channels, 650 Eeb is going to be there. So he was gracious enough, nice enough, uh, you know, to, to not mind me being there with him as well. Motorcycle Mall reached out to me and said, hey, listen, 650 Eeb is going to be here. Would you also like to do a meet and greet with him? I said, absolutely. So 650 Eeb is going to be there. He's gonna be there, I think, with his Panigale and his H2 and I think his Hayabusa as well. He's got a worked Hayabusa. I think his motor's like pumped up to about 1600 cc's. We're gonna have both of the Hayabusa's on the dyno. And if I do bring Mad Max, we're gonna have Mad Max there on the dyno at Motorcycle Mall. So definitely come on by, check it out. I'll have links for you guys down below in the description this Saturday, September 16th. Like I said, I'll be there. If you don't see me in the middle of the day, don't worry, I will be back at around four o'clock, definitely. So definitely come by, come by and say hi. I would love to meet you guys. Come by and meet 650 Eve. He's got a great channel. He's got a lot of beautiful sport bikes and he's definitely bringing some awesome bikes there. So let me put Mad Max up on the Let's Roll lift and dolly system because you guys know it's my favorite lift. I just love it, especially because I have a small garage and when I do put it on the dolly system, I'm just able to flip the bike around, roll it around. I don't have to actually move it out of the garage to do that. So let's do that right now. All right, so the first thing that I do always is grab the lift. 
Let's roll lift. I put it up underneath. I make sure that the lift is centered. This way I could roll the dolly from the other side. This way I could remove the lift very easily. So once I start touching the bike, I grab the front brake just to make sure it's not going to move forward or backwards. And then I just lift the bike up. And now that I have the bike raised, I'm gonna go over to the other side and grab the dolly and roll the dolly right underneath the bike, right between the lift. I always make sure I leave my kickstand down. I just put it right underneath. And then I go over to the other side. This is kind of how it looks. It's the Let's Roll Cruiser Dolly. It's got huge rubber caster wheels. It's got locks, one on this side and one on the other side. And what I like about this dolly, it's not like the other Harbor Freight Jacks, especially the last one that I had, which has like little tiny steel caster wheels. You could never roll it over pavers or like a crack somewhere in a concrete or a little lip because the wheels are too small. But with this dolly, it is super easy because you have the big wheels, rubber, and it just glides literally over pavement or even imperfections in the concrete. That's why I really like using it. Also, it's really wide. Once you plant the bike down on this dolly, it ain't going anywhere. So now I'm just gonna position it right under the bike. And it's that simple. I'm just gonna start lowering the jack. And then I make sure that both locks are locked. And now I lower the bike the rest of the way. That's when I could slide the lift right out. And as you guys can see, now the bike is sitting on the dolly and what's great about it is this. Other lifts have kind of the scissor mechanism right in the middle, but this is wide open and I keep telling people that. And the reason why this is so good is because now if, if I wanna work underneath the bike or if I wanna do a three hole oil change, I could just slide my bucket underneath and still get to all the drain plugs with ease. The lift mechanism is in the way in the middle. So that's why I love this so much. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I like this lift. But the second is because like I told you guys previously before, especially in a small garage, moving the bike around or even rotating it or even storing the bike sometimes in a small garage is super difficult. I know you guys could say, yeah, just open a door and roll the bike out and roll it back. And obviously, yes, you can do that. But say you have obviously a couple cars blocked in a driveway you would literally have to move the cars out. Or for example, if there's inclement weather, if you got a foot of snow on the outside or a couple inches of snow in the driveway. With this dolly and lift system, you don't have to worry about that. You could literally just spin the bike around, move it over to the other side of the garage with ease. Not only that, you save a lot of space. Like just say you're not riding over the winter and you have a really tight space, you can't fit another bike. With, if you put it on the dolly, you can because now the bike is upright and another bike will fit next to it. So I also use the dolly and lift system just for washing Mad Max. I like to keep it upright. The wheels are off the ground. I could clean the wheels very well. I could get to the left side without a problem because obviously if you don't have it on a dolly or a lift, it's leaned over and it's kind of a little difficult. So there is just so many applications, so many great applications for this lift and dolly system. If you guys are interested, definitely check it out. It's www.letsroll.store. The links are down below in the description. All right, so let me start in the front. So what do we do? Uh, okay, stock tires, right? These are the Dunlop uh, D408F. Um, don't like the tires, I'm gonna tell you. They're stock tires. They don't grip nearly as good as the Michelin Commander 3s that I had on my last build, which was Silverback. Um, they don't have good grip. Um, 
rain, I guess, okay, but they just, they break the tire loose a lot. I would definitely go with either the Michelin Commander 3s or possibly the Metzler Cruise Tex. That's probably what I would go with when I'm ready to change the tires. We got stock brake rotors and we got stock brake calipers. I did replace the pads. I forgot what pads I put in there. They might be the Lendl's, the high performance ones. Decent stopping power. I have no issues with the brake system. The wheels are actually stock. I actually powder coat them and all, all of these videos, you could go back and check them all out. But these wheels were powder coated in a super chrome. They're the stock size, stock wheels that came on this 22 Road Glide standard. The color is called Super Chrome. They came out really good. I like how they came out. They don't necessarily look exactly like chrome, like that really super uh, glossy uh, shininess to them, but they are very close. I do like how they came out. And I also powder coated the lowers in the Super Chrome. I'm also using Ride-On in the tires. I've been using that in the past couple, several builds that I did and it's just fantastic. So that fluid not only balances out the wheel and tire, I don't have any wheel weights, especially if you have some nice wheels. You don't wanna start covering them up by adding like black wheel weights. So I'm using the ride-on fluid, balances the wheel and tire, and also if you get a small nail or screw in the tire or some kind of damage to your tire, and when I say damage, I don't mean a blowout. It's not going to prevent an air loss if you have a major blowout, but it will seal your tire if you do have a small hole in it from a nail or a screw. So I'm using the ride-on fluid in the front and back wheel. I will always use that in any one of my bikes now and in the future. So we're using for a front fender, we're using the stock, a stock Road Glide ST fender. A lot of you guys have been asking me about what fender is on this. It might not be on the website, but if you do call your local Harley Davidson uh, parts department, they can order this for you. So this is a Road Glide ST front fender. Moving up to the suspension, the front suspension is plus two. So I have plus two diamond lane black anodized fork tubes. And I also have the plus two GP cartridges in there. You could get them from Krauss website. I'm gonna tell you now that they are pretty stiff. Even though I've been messing with the compression settings and the rebound settings, I can't kind of get it to where it's a little softer. I think the progressive suspension also comes like a little stiff. So now after putting like almost 11,000 miles on the bike, I do have to tell you it's a little too stiff for my liking. I wish it was just a little bit softer. It, it definitely, the bike handles well and it goes around the twisties well, but I just think when there is some imperfections in the road, pothole or whatever, I think it's just, for me, it's a little bit too stiff for my liking and I can't seem to kind of make it softer with the compression setting. So if you are going to go that route, the GP cartridges, just, just so you know, it's, it's a little stiff. I have to tell you that. Um, I rode the Get Lowered Road Glide, right? Um, and again, Everything I'm talking about, just go back in previous videos, everything is there, the full videos about it, especially the Get Lowered Road Glide. And I'm telling you, that bike has the Olin's front suspension in the front and in the back, but the front, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. It probably, I'm going to tell you, has to be the best suspension that I've ever tested out on a bike. It's just awesome. So I'm gonna have to say, like if I did this bike over again, I, I would probably go with the Olin suspension in the front. And the reason why I did plus two in the front and plus two in the back is because I wanted a little more height on the bike. A, because I'm six foot two inches tall, and B, because I like to take twisties, and I don't wanna have to worry all the time about scraping the bottom of the floorboards, and we're gonna get to why I removed the floorboards. We went with mid controls later, but those are the two biggest reasons. It's basically just to get a little more ground clearance on the bike and not having to worry always about scraping either the floorboards or the brackets and like low siding or high siding. So I definitely like that the bike is sitting up higher. Moving to the back to the crash bar, this is a Santoro Fabworks crash bar. And at the ends here, if you can see, I just put some 3M 
grip tape. So this way, because stock, it comes pretty slippery. So this way, when I do have my feet up here, they don't slip off the crash bar. But I really like this crash bar. It's like minimal. And I actually laid the bike down very gently when we were at Maine because I was holding my camera and it just protected the bike perfectly. There wasn't any scratch or nothing, no, no other portion of the bike basically laid on the ground because of this crash bar, nothing else touched. So I definitely recommend the Santoro Fabrics crash bar. So now going to the middle of the bike, I have the Arlen Ness mid controls. A lot of people ask me about this, a lot of people. And I'll tell you now, I absolutely love it. I wouldn't have any other setup for this bike or for future bikes. No matter what bike, what bagger I had, I would definitely put a set of mid controls on it. I just love it. One reason, like I said, going back to the suspension because that's why I wanted it taller to get more ground clearance. The mid controls just give you more ground clearance because they're up a little higher. You don't have the floorboards down lower and you don't have obviously the bracket. So the mid controls, I absolutely love. The linkage, even the shifting, it just feels crisp and kind of shorter. The foot position, I love. I love how my body is situated on the bike when I'm sitting on the bike. So definitely no complaints there. I would definitely highly recommend it. All right, so moving towards the back, I have the Harley Davidson. This is a Harley Davidson kit. You could get it on their website. Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle 128 Stage 4 kit. And let me tell you, I got about, I think about four or 5,000 miles on it, and I love it. I love it. It just runs. We're going to give you a startup, so don't worry. We're going to give you a startup on Mad Max. I'll also give you a startup on Thunderdome, the Hayabusa, because both bikes sound absolutely insane. So let me tell you, uh, Get Lower did all the work. All the links will be down below in the description. You could also, all these parts that I'm talking about, you could get at Get Lowered. If you use my code down below, you'll get a free t-shirt and um, you, they have all the parts. And a lot of times they have the parts where other stores don't have them. So definitely check them out. So the kit you could get straight from Harley Davidson. It's a 128. In the past, you weren't able to get a 128 for a 107, but now they have the 128. I think the max you were able to get at that time was a 124 kit, but this is a 128 stage four kit. The only thing we changed, two things, is the um, camshaft, which we didn't use the stock camshaft that came with the 128. We used a Star Racing three-quarter cam. It just sounds absolutely insane. And we also changed out the oil pump. We put in a, the SNS oil pump with cam plate and SNS lifters with the tappet covers. You catch my drift. So that's the engine build. We kept the stock crank and stuff like that. And this engine just ripped. So we got about 142 horsepower on it and about 137 foot pounds of torque. Wouldn't change a damn thing. Love it. Love how it sounds. Love the power. A lot of power all the way up to 6,500 RPM. I'm not joking. It just pulls. And we killed a lot of weight. We're going to go over that. We killed a lot of weight, about 50, 60 pounds on this bike. I'm not joking. And I just ran two of my boys coming back from Bikes and Breakfast. And one of them had a 128 stage three or four kit, I believe, on his bike. And the other had a stage two. And they started before me. And I was probably about 20 feet in back of them and I just passed them like they were standing still. I'm telling you, this thing, Mad Max rips, man. It just, it runs so good. Great tune, great build done by Get Lowered. Highly recommend the shop. So from the engine, we have the infamous best exhaust that you could possibly get, whether it's the two into two Chromeworks black chrome Eclipse exhaust that I had on Silverback or this one, the Chromeworks two into one Outlaw all in chrome. This exhaust is nasty. Let me tell you, this exhaust sounds so good. And all you guys know it because you guys hear it on the motor vlogs, but when you hear it in person, it is insane. I just love how this pipe sounds. I don't think there's any other pipe that sounds as good. We have a reducer baffle inside. You guys would have to call Chromeworks if you guys want that reducer. And again, if you guys want more information, 
just go back into the videos and just check all that out. All right, so as I stated in the front, we got plus two in the front, and we also have plus two in the back. I'm running the Legend Revo Arc. These are reservoir canisters for the fluid. The shocks are 14 inch. They're two inches taller, not one inch, but two inches taller than stock suspension, and that's why the bike sits so high. And I'm gonna show you guys on the other side what you also have to do if you do want a plus two suspension. But I honestly have no issues with the back. Really like the suspension. The front is a little too stiff, but the back, you do have compression and rebound adjustments on the top and on the bottom. So fully adjustable. I don't have any problems with the rear suspension. I would definitely recommend the Legends. They work well. Never had an issue with them. Also on my previous builds on Silverback on this one, never had an issue. Great product. So now as far as seat goes, uh, rocking the Saddleman step-up seat. Last bike, Silverback, I had the Saddleman SDC Pro Gripper seat really like that you could also get it with a little backrest it was it was definitely comfortable did some long trips i put about i'm going to say 25,000 miles on silverback in a, just about a year and a half it's it's a really comf comfortable seat this seat is even more comfortable i believe in my opinion than the sdc pro gripper seat but definitely highly recommend saddleman and if you want something even more comf comfortable than this seat uh, i would recommend going with something like a road sofa joe's got one my buddy joe he has one on his road glide st fast johnny uh, he's even got it with the blue stitch in it just looks absolutely insane so now i'm gonna take the camera in my hand so i can show you up top here so what did we go with here you guys know I always rock the Clockworks windshields. I believe they're the best, my opinion. I just, not only do I think they work the best because they have that like patented design with the curved, with the flare going up, but love the look. It just looks, the bike looks great. The bike looks killer. I'm gonna tell you now, I had the six inch on here for me no good long rides all the bugs grow right into your face i had the nine inch on here kind of the same thing with with your height if you're a taller rider you're not going to want a shorter windshield i'm going to tell you now if you are aren't worried about bugs and wind and stuff like that and if you don't do long rides if you're kind of just taking the bike back and forth and going here or there not putting a lot of miles on the highway I guess you could stick with a six or a nine, but if you're definitely doing long trips, riding all winter long like I am, this is the 11 inch Sport Flare windshield. For me and my height, it works the absolute best because when I'm riding on the highway, I literally, all the bugs and even rain, believe it or not, riding in the rain all the time, it just kind of just goes right over my helmet. That wind just takes everything right over. So definitely highly recommend Clockworks best windshield on the market we're gonna move back here now i actually replaced my gauges i put in uh black gauges i did have the white face gauges i didn't like them you can't if the sun is shining right onto them it's really difficult to see them so a lot of people ask me this this is my easy pass i just painted it black and i have it up there uh, works perfectly and it's uh, it's not visible really for everybody to see but it's in a great spot for it to work so now going here this is the Krauss Wolf Pro kit so it has the ODI bar which is four inches and then it has I have the eight inch kickback riser and I also have the top triple tree and going back to the GP cartridges right here you have right on top on the left and on the right side, you have the rebound compression adjustments as well as preload. You could you could change everything on the suspension. That is one thing I do like about it, but it's just a little too stiff for my liking. So I have the ODI bar, eight inch kickback riser, triple tree, and as you guys can see, that saved a lot of weight. I don't have like the plastic nacelle or anything anymore or the ignition switch. It turns on basically, just come over here and you see I could just turn on the bike just by pressing that switch. As long as you have the key fob next to you, all you do is press that switch. It kind of works like a CVO. Uh, I have a little bag here just for 
uh, stuff I like to carry on long trips. I have my quad lock wireless phone charger right there down below. I installed a USB. Um, I have all wireless uh, Bluetooth, wireless Apple CarPlay, all of that. I don't have like the dongle in here anymore. It's up in there connected to the Bluetooth adapter. Um, again, check out all the videos. Uh, that's just my mount for the camera. I do have heated grips. A lot of people were asking me, how did you get the heated grips on the ODI bar? You have to drill the bar out a little bit. You have to be very careful. You gotta take very tiny amount of material out of these ODI bars for the actual heated grip element for you to be able to insert the heated grip element from the stock Harley Davidson heated, uh, heated grips. So there is a little bit of finagling you have to do. Flow Motorsport levers, love these levers because they're fully adjustable and breakaway. I have the Memphis Shades hand guards, never leave home without it, absolutely. You gotta have them on. Whether, how many times, I, I, I can't even tell you how many times I got beamed in the knuckle by a piece of gravel or rain. If, you know, if rain feels, if you're going like 60, 70 miles an hour and it's raining, it just feels like pins and needles all over your hand. Not comfortable, so I highly recommend the Memphis Shades hand guards. Also, it keeps that cold wind off your hands. And in the winter time, if you're riding, and if you have your heated grip set kind of onto a low setting with these hand guards, your hands are nice and toasty. Uh, what else up here? Okay, so you got this, I got the suspension, I got the engine. So how, how are we cooling the motor here? Well, let's go over that. So for one thing is I do have a electric fan on the stock oil cooler right there. And let me tell you guys something really cool. This is how you check that fan. I did put out a video about it. I'm gonna show you guys now. Look, if you just flip your power on and hold the throttle full, hear it? The fan kicked on. That's how, and it will only shut off when you shut the bike off, now it's shut off. That's how you check your fan. And I'm gonna tell you guys now, cause I didn't put out a video about this. I did check uh, because people are asking me, does it work on a limited? It does. So if you have a limited, Harley Davidson limited with fans on it, with the, you know, cooled heads, if you put on the power and put your throttle to full, the fans will kick on. So that's how you check them. And a lot of people were telling me that as soon as they seen my video and they went to go check the fans on their bike, they didn't work. But the majority of you guys, when you guys went down to your bikes, when you did that, the fans worked. But definitely do check it. Go down to your bike, make sure your fans are working. If you do have fans on your bike, that's how you check it. So then also uh, for cooling this Monster 128, we got a ultra cool oil cooler set up. That's an extra oil cooler. So I have two oil coolers. This has dual fans and the lines run to kind of like a plenum that's in between the oil filter and the engine case. So that's where they run, those lines run to that plenum. And then I also have an ultra cool oil filter. This setup is fantastic. This and the oil filter in combination cool the engine oil down approximately 60 degrees. So it's, it's amazing. I would definitely highly recommend it. You could also, if you want, run a set of love jugs, but I decided to go this route. So this way the oil stays nice and cool and you don't lose the lubrication properties because as the engine heats up and as the oil heats up, the hotter that oil gets, the worse your lubrication properties will be. So now coming down to the primary, so we're running a Evolution Industries clutch and clutch assembly, the whole basket and everything. I absolutely highly recommend this clutch system. I had it on Silverback after previous other clutches failed. This clutch system from Evolution Industries is unbelievable it is a it is a bear let me tell you and i'm also running the evolution industries hardened ramp up in front and then i decided to remove the belt system we went with a trask chain conversion kit which includes the sprocket and the chain and the front sprocket and we also have the kraus axle 
adjusters right there so this way we don't have to worry we took that cam stock cam system out and we put the kraus adjusters in there definitely highly recommend all that so we kind of made everything kind of pretty much bulletproof other than the trans but i've never had an issue with the stock trans i know a lot of people that have had some issues or blew their trans and the more of the lines of what happened was is that they on power missed putting the transmission into gear fully and that's when you start blowing gears and stuff like that but i've never had a problem i'm not going to be replacing the transmission at this time little things like figurati designs swing arm caps a great product got the curiac and block off plates for the rear passenger pegs as you guys can see here we got the arlen s mid controls this is the gear shift side so here's the thing i wanted to show you guys uh as far as talking about the plus two suspension front and back i am running a plus one kickstand with a one inch block as you guys can see there and the reason you have to do that is because if you decide to go with a plus two suspension front and back the bike if you just keep the stock kickstand the bike is going to be leaned over way too much so that's what you have to do. I'm running the plus one kickstand and a one inch block. Well, you could also, you could see here in the back, the back wheel powder coated, same color in the super chrome, just like the front. Got some stock black Harley Davidson mirrors. Just, I like them honestly, because I've had other previous mirrors on the bike. E, say if you wanted something more, a li little narrower that maybe look a little nicer, but honestly, you, I just can't see out of them. And if you want to turn into a lane really quick, the visibility is way too important for me. And I just, I like these mirrors. I don't mind how they look. All right, let's go over the awesome custom dynamics lighting that I have on Mad Max. So we are running the custom dynamics rear tail light. Just, I have to tell you, I absolutely love how the bike looks with the custom dynamics lighting. It is just amazing. Super, super bright. We're gonna go over every single light on the bike, super, super bright, and just love how the bike came out. Love how the bike looks. So we're running, let me put a turn signal on here for you guys. So we're running the bag lights right there on the hinge. And just so you guys know, everything in the back is red and everything in the front is white. When I put the turn signals on in the back, they're still red, but when I put the turn signals on in the front, they are in amber. But if I don't have any turn signals or hazards on, everything in the back is red, front is white. So I'm running the hinge lights, I'm running the bag lights, but the thin ones, they do have a thicker light on their website. I chose to go with the thin light. I have the filler panel lights, as well as the small brake light here in the, in the middle on the fender, along with their curved license plate bracket. I just, I love how the bike looks. And it's so bright. And then now in the front, Here's where it gets awesome. Let me shut the, you see how the signal works, right? So here, look at that. I mean, tell me that doesn't look absolutely insane. So we got the windshield trim light right there on both sides. It goes right over the Clockworks windshield. And let me tell you here, this is what I really love about these custom dynamics lights this whole front setup right here. So we're running the double X headlight. And I'm gonna tell you now, this thing is so bright. It's like, if not brighter than a car headlight. It's amazing, especially when you turn the head beam on. And it looks killer because of that X, that double X right there. I'm also running the vent lights with the grills in them. It just looks awesome. Hope you guys could see that well. And then down below, I'm running the sleek, it's all high gloss black, sleek turn signals right there in white. And I'm also running the fog lamps. What's cool about these is really small. I mounted them up high on the bar. Right here, there's a high 
high beam switch, if you guys could see that. And I decided to mount the switch here because it's right in arm's length and I didn't want the high beam kind of on the same circuit when I turn on the regular high beam switch on the handlebar. So that's the lights all by Custom Dynamic. Absolutely fantastic lighting system and it just looks absolutely killer. So I'm telling you, everything I did to this bike I love. There's a few things, like I said, probably the biggest thing is the front cartridges, the front suspension. I would just, I would have loved for them to be just a little more compliant, a little more uh, subtle, a little more softer. Um, because kind of when you do go over imperfections in the road, hit that, hit that pothole, uh, kind of, it's kind of jolting sometimes to a point. So that's probably, I'm going to have to say the only thing, honestly, that I could think of on this bike that I would have probably done differently. Only one thing is the front suspension. I would have probably used Olin's, but the problem is Olin's doesn't make a plus two uh, cartridge. So that's why I had to go with the GP. All right, are you guys ready for the nasty sound of both of the bikes? Let's start them up. How good does that sound? I'm telling you guys, insane. All right, let's, let me give you guys a startup on the Hayabusa, man, because let me tell you, I love a motorcycle with a good sounding exhaust, and this is just another one of them with the Brock's full alien head too. how deep that is that's what I love about it just so deep but I tell you guys after the 11,000 almost miles that I put on Mad Max it is by far the best the best Harley Davidson I've ever had and the best Harley I've ever ridden. Just everything that I did to this bike works so good together. And again, this is my opinion and works good for me. So certain things that I did may not work for you. And that's why this journey is fun when we get our Harley Davidsons and we're able to 
install the components that we love onto our own bikes and make them our own. And you know, like that's what it's all about, just making the bike your own. So thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions about anything I did to the bike, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about Mad Max. Hope to see you guys there this Saturday, September 16th at Motorcycle Mall. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.